Hello everyone, I'm Sammy. In this talk, I'm going to introduce a better practice on how we validate the request payloads when implementing APIs. So most of the web developers may have the experiences of creating APIs and export it to customers. But depending on the requirements you received or defined by yourself, the ways to validate those incoming request payloads may vary. So today I'm going to talk about how we can implement it by using Decorator and what are the advantages of using it. So here's the agenda. For the first few minutes, I'll give out some examples of how can developers implement the validator in a messy way. And then a knowledge refreshing about what is Decorator and how can we create one on our own. I believe the intro of my talk on the PyCon website mentioned that I'll use Flask plus Cerberus, which is a third-party data validation library to demo the steps of building a validator as a decorator. This will be an around 10 minutes demo, including API implementation, validator implementation, and test cases. Then I'll talk about if it is okay to use other data validation libraries and how in real life developers write their request payload validation on other web frameworks, such as Django or FastAPI. But first of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is Sammy Wen. I'm currently a software engineer in an API company called Nylas, which is creating a communication platform as a service. I'm mainly working on our real-time email sync architecture for our unified API interface among different email providers, such as Google, Microsoft, and IMAP protocol. The code I'm showing today is not that similar to what our company do, but I'm mostly taking email object creation and account creation, for example. Okay, so here are two examples of a messy way to validate request payload. The left one is pretty straightforward. We're going to write a lot of code for validation in every API. Um, this is actually not elegant and pretty easily to introduce bugs. And the one on the right hand side, in my opinion, it is good enough. It is using another data validation and serialization tool called Marshmallow. But in this example, we should initialize the schema object and then call validate method every time. So as for implementing request payload validator, what do we care about? I think both uh, the two examples I showed are not independent to actual API implementation. It's required for adding like one to two lines of code or even more codes into it. And also we need to make sure the validator we're creating is reusable and extensible as APIs input in a service are usually similar. And there is no way to predict how far will your service grow, uh, which is highly depending on the business side. So to achieve the first point, it is intuitive that we start thinking about um, building a middleware, a middleware which can do request payload validation every time before an API call. If you're building a lightweight web service, such as using Flask, I think Decorator is a great choice for it. Okay, let's refresh everyone's memory about Python decorator. A decorator is actually a function. And inside the implementation, um, there is a wrapper which takes the function that is going to use the decorator as the input and then extends the function's behavior. The example on the right looks a bit more complicated than usual. I'm creating the decorator as a class. So why am I doing that? It is because we want it to maintain some more attributes inside the instance as well. Just like the version attribute that I wrote down here. And since I'm creating the validator as a class, I should implement call method to make it works like a function and be able to work as a decorator. Later on, when we're live demoing, we're also following this structure. And now we have this structure, then how are we going to write the validation rules? We need a data validation library. 
Here I take Cerberus as the example. It's a lightweight and extensible data validation library for Python. But to make the usage much easier, the schema for validating data is not exactly the JSON schema. You should follow the doc and create, let's say, um, Cerberus schema. Oh, um, by the way, uh, you can click the Python snake icon besides the title to see the doc and benchmark. Okay, so let's say we have an HTTP POST API with several input fields needed. First, we need to define a validation schema based on how we want the input looks like. And then we use it to create a validator instance. And after that, we call the validator's validate method to validate data against the schema. And here are some advantages of this library I would like to mention. The most important thing I like is that it provides a lot of validation rules and some normalization rules. It's fairly easy to use since the documentation is pretty clear. Also, it supports most of the data types. As for the things to clear, uh, the extensibility and the reusability. Cerberus support custom rules and rule binding and inheriting. So it's a pretty suitable library for us to use. And in a, in a live demo later, I'm combining the decorator I introduced with Cerberus. So here's an example of how it looks like. When I give JSON um, equals to something as a keyword argument, I'm validating JSON request payload. And in the value of that argument, I provide every input field's name as the keys, and the values are the corresponding validation schema of the field. And here I also did a trick. Since the validator could do some data normalizations, I put the preprocessed input payload as request.j for me to use it later. Okay, so all the knowledge we need are set. Let's do a live demo on how to implement it. Um, you can git clone the code or just watch my demo. Um, in the code base, um, source code such as an API validator and error handling are all in re2 underscore validator directory. Um, when run up the web service, it calls the um, create add function in uh, defining init.py. And here I register the API route and the error handler. As for the error handling and response generator, uh, they're not the main point of today's talk, but you can see them in exception.py and response.py. So now let's get into the implementation of the API. In api.py, I create several simple APIs which only validating the request input. There are four APIs related to four cases, query string, um, form data, um, JSON payload, and files. And I set up different validation rules for different input so that I can show you several examples of how the validation go. And now let's step into the um, validators.py. Um, in order to support some custom rules, I create a child class called my validator. Here I'm creating two rules, estate validation and trim normalization. The Cerberus library only needs me to follow the function name format, which is the prefix here and here. And the Python runtime could find it while validating. And that's it. And then here I define request validator as a class, just like well, what I demo in the decorator example. So in the initialization method, I accept these four keyword arguments, uh, which the input value will be a Cerberus schema. And if the arguments value is not none, we should create a validator object based on the schema input. And in the call method, I implement a wrapper function. Inside the wrapper, uh, it traverses all four cases, all four cases, uh, to see if 
it should validate that case. And if it is needed, uh, we gather the input data and then validate and normalize it, uh, which we call the inner function here. And uh, at the end, we add an additional attribute to Flask request instance so that we can get the normalized and verified data. So as here, uh, we write it as uh, defining the additional attribute. And that's the uh, implementation of the validator. And let's go back to the API.py. So now I have four APIs that I can demo. And the query string one is trying to uh, is trying to demo the state rule, allowed rule, and empty rule. And then the form data part uh, is trying the trim normalization, uh, regular expression rules, and then the dependency rules. Uh, so as for the dependency rule, uh, if you want multiple fields exist or not exist at the same time. Dependency rule is the best way to implement. Okay, let's go to the JSON part. So uh, the JSON payload one is trying the contain rule and min max value rule and schema rule. And here the schema means that input field is a dictionary. So it actually means that uh, we can create nested validation schema and also means that we can validate nested input data. And the last one is uh, the file. Uh, it is actually not using Cerberus validation library, but I built the validator to check if the input is in file data. Okay, and now we can test these APIs. So let's move to the test validation.py. Um, my test cases are pretty simple. They are all integration tests. And at the beginning, I provide invalid input to let it generate um, the validation error. Um, and then provide and then I provide the valid input to generate uh, the good status response. And um, all the four test cases are following that kind of uh, structure. So let's start up the web server first, and then I can run the test. Okay, now it's running. And then I can do PyTest. Okay, so as you can see, the web service got a lot of requests and passed all the invalid and valid setups. And let's um, do another demo, which is that I change uh, like one of the valid payload to partially invalid and see how it returns. So let's say the allow test, I change from this to D, which is not allowed, sorry. Okay, now I test again. I test. Okay, and here we can see um, there is an assertion error uh, from our test run. And the error data is pretty clear that it shows the problem field and what's wrong with it. Okay, this is all the brief look on how to create a request payload validator as a decorator. But after this talk, you can also think about something like, how can you follow this way to create a response validator for your service? Also, you can look at the Cerberus doc and learn other features to extend your validator's implementation. And now let's talk about other stuffs. I believe most of you are not aware of Cerberus before uh, my talk, or even not aware about Marshmallow, but you won't miss a validation schema called JSON schema. I also mentioned it a few minutes ago, and there is also a validator implementation in Python for it, letting us to provide a JSON schema and then validate data against that. So let me talk about why I didn't choose it to build my validator. 
The JSON schema validator in Python has a pretty similar usage as Cerberus. And first, we need to define a JSON schema based on how we want the data looks like. And then we use it to create a validator instance. And after that, uh, we can call the library's validate function to validate data against that JSON schema. Actually, it is still a useful tool. Uh, it supports extending the validate function or even like create your own validator. And it's quite common requirement that you're asked to follow JSON schema because the APIs you build needs doc generation. But like we should think about, is it easy enough for you to create JSON schema for all your APIs? Or are they easy enough to achieve the reusability and extensibility? Okay, um, now let's leave the discussion on using Flask. Uh, we can now talk about how other web frameworks such as Django or Flask API um, build their validator and what is a good practice to implement their um, API request validation. So uh, searching in the GitHub, you can find a cool stuff uh, open source by Hardcore Tech which is called uh, Data Spec Validator. Uh, things people who are creating web service uh, by using Django mostly use view class based API. Then designing the validator for view class is a must. And one thing that is worth uh, mentioned here is that it support decorator, uh, which is DSV here, to extend the behavior on the API request handling. And you can see here, the code readability is pretty good. And other than Flask and Django, there's another Python web framework that is really popular called Fast API. And one of the built-in feature I really like is its support on generating API documentation. And as for supporting that, uh, Fast API actually requires user to install Pydentic. So what is Pydentic? It is a data validation tool which utilizes Python type hint. The only thing you need to do is to define a model with fields and their type hint, and then implement validate functions for those fields. So when setting up the API input type, the validation will be there and ready. And today I'm not showing the example of customizing model config and how did it support ORM mode, but it is quite clear to follow Pydentic's documentation and get familiar with it. So here's the end of my talk about request payload validator as a decorator. And thanks for spending the time to go through this journey with me. Thank you.